Where am I? Oh cool, it's Five Night Freddy. Five Nights at Freddy's is a video game series created by Scott Cawthon and started in 2014. The series gained notoriety after being played by internet funny man Markiplier. So anyways, I think it's safe to say that Five Freddy at Night is a pretty popular thing. So in this video, I'm gonna take a look at some of the games made by fans. Not to be confused with ripoffs, those are two different things. So without further ado, time to play some funny FNAF fan games. May or may not be funny. The first game we'll be looking at is Five Nights at the Pizzaplex. Now when the banner in the background is in 144p, that's how you already know this game's gonna be a banger. So the first thing you might notice is that the game makes it very obvious that it's just a work in progress. And yeah, I think that's particularly obvious once you're in the game. First of all, the game plays this horrendous sound effect at the beginning of every night. And if you play it at max volume, you're probably gonna be sent to the emergency room. The gameplay loop itself isn't all too great either. There's this weird semi-transparent door you use to ward off Freddy, you deal with Moondrop by winding the music box, Afton is kinda just vibing there, and you deal with Monty by putting on a mask. Now you may be wondering where Roxanne Wolf might be. Well, the developer of this game is not like other game devs, because he is quirky. Whenever an animatronic moves around in this game, they kinda just turn into a box. Like seriously, all you had to do was make the layer invisible, it's really not that hard. Also, do you see these letters on the wall? Yeah, you click those buttons to make things happen. You don't use a keyboard, you, you click them. Another annoying thing that happened in this game is that when you release the door, the FNAF 2 sound effect where the animatronics are in your room plays for a really, really long time. One last thing to note is that it's actually really boring for the first couple nights, since you only have one or two animatronics attacking you. You see, the joke is that it's something you see in popular children's entertainment game, Roblox. Overall, I'm actually a bit disappointed. I feel like more effort could have been put into the development of the game. The idea of putting Security Breach in the original FNAF style is actually really interesting. And this game ends up feeling sort of like a missed opportunity. The Game Jolt page does say that this is the full release of the game, so we can only hope that someone else will make a game with this concept. Also, my ears hurt. The next game we'll be looking at is Honey Bear's Fantasy Cancel Demo. First off, for a cancelled game, this menu is actually pretty high quality. And the gameplay itself is pretty interesting too. There isn't really a goal to the game, you kinda just run around and away from that guy. When you're in the same room as the funny looking man, the percentage in the bottom left corner goes up. And when it reaches 100, well, you know what happens. Now you may be wondering if there's anything to stop you from just running around infinitely. And that would be a yes. There's a computer terminal in the office where you have to generate heat and keep the power on. But here's the catch. Like in FNAF 6, the computer you're working with is really shitty, and it takes forever to do literally anything. And of course, when you run out of power, you die. Aside from the fact that the jump scare looks a bit choppy, the way the sound design and tension work is great. And it's definitely better than the majority of the jump scares in Ultimate Custom Night. Yeah, I said it. So yeah, you just try to get a high score. But this little minigame isn't everything the game has to offer. However, it is most of it. The extras menu shows off all the designs of the characters, and you could hit enter to play a scrapped version of the game. And aw oh, man, this game mode is hectic. Instead of a high score system, you're trying to make it to 6am. There's a duct system that stops one animatronic from getting in, the animatronic from before is chasing you, and none of it matters because they can't kill you anyway. I know I am. There seems to have been quite a bit of characters that were scrapped. And not gonna lie, it's kind of a shame this game's never gonna be finished. I'd say the general vibe of this game is between FNAF 6 and Tyke and Sons Lumber Company, mainly due to the woodland aesthetic. But yeah, I recommend this game. There really isn't all that much content to it, but the game itself is decently fun. The next game we'll be looking at is Fred Bear's Fright. So the game starts in the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 office and oh, I fell over. So first off, I really like this title screen. 
The three monitor aesthetic is something I vibe with. Also, it's different from most FNAF games or something like that. When you start the night, you just get the most jolly phone call. Hello and welcome to your new job at the spooky haunting place where animatronics swim around the shovel and suits, etc. Just so many fun times. The game feels like a remixed FNAF 1 with some new mechanics. Like in FNAF 1, there's still a door on the left. However, on the right side, instead of another door, there's a vent. And next to that vent is a number pad. On the top of the office, there's a lever that you can pull to activate the sprinkler. Something this game does really well is the design of the animatronics. The designs for Fredbear and Spring Bonnie are the most notable, however the designs for the rest of the cast isn't bad either. Even though some of them don't make the most sense, the way the location looks is also really interesting, featuring various nods and references to past FNAF games. There's also a mysterious camera that doesn't activate till 7am. Unfortunately for us though, the nights only go to 6. This game really had to ruin the victory theme. But speaking of finishing the nights, after you do that you get to play the most entertaining minigames ever! Aw, oh, hell yeah. Gameplay-wise, Fredbear's Fright isn't bad either. The animatronics tend to do pretty interesting things, my favorite being Scrapped Fredbear. He basically gives you a call, says a bunch of funny numbers, and then leaves. One nine seven three six two one eight minion. Overall, this game is silly, wacky, funny. The next game we'll be looking at is FNAF Old Storage. Wow, I'm excited for this one. So first things first, I got an error before even running the game. And boy oh boy do I wish I followed that warning. So before the game starts, there's a cutscene, and what am I even looking at? Oh, so I reopened the game and now I can play. Can someone please explain the lore of this cutscene? I don't understand. It just looks like a bunch of drawings made by a seven-year-old. Oh man, this is scary. So as you could probably tell, this most likely isn't the best game in this video. So first off, the footsteps are incredibly loud. Like you can hear this guy from halfway across the map. Next. Where are we, a pumpkin? Why is everything so orange? And of course we just have the finest royalty-free horror music playing in the background. So anyways, your main goal is to find eight papers. Now by papers, the game actually means these giant brick slabs of white. So yeah, you kind of just wander around aimlessly looking for those, and then you do all that while my man Afton slowly chases you down. Yeah, I mean slowly. Fucking terrifying. So yeah, Afton is basically a non-threat, but don't worry, because Springtrap is actually not the only enemy. You also randomly get a PNG image of Nightmare Foxy in your face, and the game pauses to do it, so you don't have to worry about Springtrap jump scaring you while you're getting jump scared yourself. Oh, and when you get all the pages, this happens. And then it sends you back to the beginning, so that you can do it all again. Overall, FNAF Old Storage is a funny game. In fact, it is so funny that I never want to play it again. The last game we'll be looking at is Five Nights at Terry's. Yo, Terry, do you mind moving away from the camera, please? So this is Five Nights at Terry's. Damn, could that newspaper get any lower quality? This game is sort of a reimagining of the second Five Nights at Freddy's game. The main difference is that there's only two animatronics and six cameras. Also, the phone calls are pretty silly. Hello, and welcome to your new job here as a night guard slash security guard. Make sure nothing bad happens, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. So anyways, when you flash the light, random aspects of your room change. Also, on night one, my man Terry just randomly went to this camera and never left. So for basically the entire night, I was just going like... But then night two comes along. Hey! Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, um, use 
I'm so that's all I have to say. No because that's the only thing I can uh, give you, and I will uh, talk to you tomorrow. So anyways, on night two, Terry does this thing called actually attacking you, and the game gives you a whole 0.2 seconds to react before killing you instantly. And, uh, I refuse to go through the monologue again, so... Overall, Five Nights at Terry's is alright, I guess. It has, like, a really odd charm to it. And that makes this actually surprisingly enjoyable. I think the best part about fan games is that they're made out of genuine passion for the original material. Whereas for ripoffs, you could tell that they were made with the sole purpose of making money. Even with the fan games that are a bit less than stellar, you could at least tell the developer isn't making it for a quick buck. And that's what I think separates a ripoff from a fan game. Oh yeah, one more thing before I go. This video idea was given to me by my epic homie Logan, so if you think this video sucks, kill him.